Hey traders, welcome to another video on my channel equities and uh, today's video is about options. This is just an introductory uh, video but it's a long one. Uh, I try to include as much information as possible for all the beginners and maybe intermediate traders that are following me to start getting into options so before we get started let me just get the legal stuff out of the way please read the disclaimer before proceeding uh, in brief i'm not a financial advisor and all the presented information in my videos are from sources believed to be accurate but I don't guarantee its accuracy. Please read it before you proceed. Okay, so what's on the menu today? Today we are going to see what do, me, do we mean by derivatives, what are options, types of options, the specifications of options contracts, option symbols, and how to read them, what do we mean by options chains, options pricing, and finally the Greeks. So as I said, it's, uh, it's going to be a long uh, video, so let's start going. So the first thing on, on our menu today was uh, derivatives and from the word a derivative is a financial contract or instrument that derives its value from the value of something else which is called the underlying and the derivative this underlying could be an asset like stock currencies commodities bonds an index like the SMP or the FTSE or even not an asset like interest rates as we are going to see in, in, in another video. I, uh, I, uh, I speak a little bit about derivatives. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, the global financial market video. Uh, I think that should be on uh, the channel within a few days. So please check it out. Okay, so next topic, what are options? As you might have expected, an option is a derivative. It's a formal agreement between two parties, a buyer and a seller. About the word formal, options contracts are standardized agreements because they are traded on exchanges. So as we will see, the, all the contracts terms are predefined so and also theoretically there is no default risk on the options contract being fulfilled no default risk on the options contract being fulfilled on any of the parties because this is guaranteed by options clearing houses they, they guarantee the execution or the fulfillment of the obligation on the, on, on the options contract. What I always say about options or what I like most about options is options give you option and uh, options and this was all about. You buy options because, because you want to have an option to take a certain decision in the future and on the other hand if you sell an option an options contract it's called write an option you simply don't believe there will be a valuable option for the buyer to make in the future there will be no valuable decision for the buyer to take before the expiry date and if we put it in technical wording you expect the contract to expire 
worthless. We will talk more about this later in, in the video, just taking it step by step. So what are the types of options? We have two types of options, a call option and a put option. You may buy or sell a call option and you may buy or sell a put option. So we end up with four combinations. Buy a call, sell a call, or buy a put and sell a put. What do we mean by each? So let's say buy a call. When you are long, when you buy an options contract, you have the right but not the obligation. No matter which one you buy, a call or a put, as long as you are a buyer, a holder, you have the right but not the obligation to take some action in the future. If you are short an options contract, again a call or a put you have the obligation to fulfill the terms of the options contract okay i know this is confusing that's why i'm taking it step by step so the long call long call you're going to buy a call here we are talking about a trader who bought a call option he is the holder the buyer, so again, just a reminder, the buyer of a call option has the right but not the obligation. Okay, to do what? To buy a fixed predefined quantity of the underlying at a predefined price on or before a predefined date. I put the or before between brackets. We are going to come to this uh, after a couple of slides. This is the long call. Let's move on to the long put, to buy a put, just to, to see the difference. Here we are talking about a trader who bought a put option. Again the holder, the buyer. The buyer of a put option has the right but not the obligation to sell a fixed predefined quantity of the underlying at a predefined price on or before a predefined date. So this is just to compare between them. For the long call, buy. Long put, you sell. Okay, so far, let's look from the other side, from the, the short side. A short call, we are talking about a trader who sold a call option. We are here now. He sold a call option, the writer. The option buyer is called the holder of the option. The option seller is called the writer. The seller of a call option has the obligation to sell a fixed predefined quantity of the underlying at a predefined price on or before a predefined date. You might say it's a call. How come you sell? If the buyer of the call here, this guy, has the right to buy, so someone should be selling to him. So this is our call writer, or call seller, sell, okay? Now the 
short put again we are talking about a trader who sold a put option the seller of a put option is obliged now to do what the buyer of a put option he is going to sell here so the seller of the put option is obliged to buy again same terms predefined quantity of the underlying at predefined price on or before a predefined date I'm, I'm taking my time on this because this is confusing and uh, I've done a lot of mistakes before when placing a trade because I get confused so just look at it uh, go over this slide again it's uh, you should you should you should get it it's not it's not uh, it's not rocket science now let's see what are the specifications of an options contract to have an option contracts a contract on an exchange four things need to be specified you need to specify the type of the option. It's a call or a put, which makes sense. Next, this contract is on what asset, or as we said, it might not be an asset, but what is the underlying that uh, we are going to, to trade with, with the option? Is it stock? Is it currencies? Is it commodities? And at what price we want to have the trade of the underlying. Um, let's say that we are interested in stock Amazon. Okay, I want to buy Amazon in the future. Okay, good for you. At what price? This is the strike price. When? Forever? You want to buy Amazon uh, whenever it goes to this price forever? No, you have to specify an expiry date for the contract. As, as we said in the beginning, the contract is an agreement between a buyer and a seller. Buyer and a seller. So all the terms should be clear. Because by the end of this term, by, by the expiry date, we will have a, a loser and someone who made profit. So you specify which type of the option, a call or a put, what's the underlying, the symbol of the underlying, if it's crude oil, it will be CL, for example. The strike price, and finally, the expiry date. Let's go through um, a real life example, just to see how useful options are. Okay here just to, to, to take some notes and so you can follow. Say you live in Florida and you got a big promotion and you got excited so you decided it's time to upgrade your house with a bigger one. A bigger house with a pool, nice big backyard. So you search the market until you find your dream home. You like everything about the house. You spoke with the with the with the real estate agent and you agreed upon all the terms. And he said that the paperwork will be ready and everything should be finalized next week. Next day, your boss comes to your office and he tells you that you might be reallocated to California. The company board will take a decision on the next board meeting in three months. Now, what about the house? For sure, it will not wait 90 days until you know what you're going to do. Are you going to stay in Florida or are you going to go to California? So, what would you do? What are your options? Do you have any options? Well, option number one, 
do nothing. You're not going to do anything. You'll just wait until the board take a decision. And if you're going to stay in, in Florida, you're going to check if the house is still available. Uh, if you're going to go to California, you didn't lose anything. But you want to have some options. So you decided to speak with the real estate agent and you told him about your situation. And you asked him that you want uh, to reserve the house for 90 days. So, this is the expiry date of the agreement you are proposing. 90 days from the date you are going to sign the agreement with the agent or with the other, um, with the other owners. So, the estate agent told you that he's going to speak with the, owner and, or with the owners and come back to you. He came back to you with the following proposal. They said that uh, the owners are ready to wait for 90 days and not to sell the house. But for them to do so, they want to be compensated. They want to be paid a premium. A premium. For this premium is for what? This premium is for them to reserve the house in your name for the coming 90 days. Why they ask for premium? Because they have few concerns. They are, there are risks that they are taking by not selling the house for 90 days. One of them is the deal might not go through in, in three months. You might move to Florida and they will not sell the house and who knows after three months what will happen. They might wait and they lose good opportunities for selling the house before the 90 days. House prices may go down during this period. They are also concerned because they heard on the news that Florida is expecting a power powerful hurricane uh, in two months and the damages would cost them extra money. So they, they will incur extra cost because they will have to fix all the damages before they offer the house for sale. So they want to be paid an unrefundable premium and they decided this premium to be one percent of of the price of the house so we have a premium of one percent if we assume that just for the sake of the example that the house is hundred thousand dollars so the premium is one thousand dollars So look look at what I have on the slide now. Our underlying is the house. This is the underlying. Our expiry date is 90 days. Here's the 90 day. The price of the house is a hundred thousand dollars. This is the strike. This is the strike. This strike price is guaranteed for 90 days. And this is, yeah, and the premium which they agreed upon, which both of you agreed upon, is 1%. Now the 90 days have passed. You have all the options. The, 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 the seller, the house owners, they are waiting for your decision. Let's say that during the 90 days the house prices went up so after 90 days house prices went up by 10 percent so now the house that 
you can buy for a hundred thousand is worth one hundred and ten thousand. Now it's this this scenario is is irrespective if, if, if of, of the board decision if you're going to stay in Florida or go to California, it's your decision. The options are are, are yours and you could say, okay, I'm going to buy, even I'm going to California, but I'm going to buy the house for $100,000 and sell it in the market for 110 and I make how much profit? You sell it for 110 and you bought it for 100000 correct? You made $10,000. Is this correct? No, this is not correct. You have to deduct the premium, so minus $1,000 premium. So your net profit is $9,000. Always make sure to deduct the, the premium from your calculation calculations. We're going to go through this in more than one video, but just for now, let's keep going. So it's a good deal. And what if the prices of the house of uh, the, the, the the prices of the houses during uh, this 90 days it went down by 10 percent? You just forfeit your your options and you'll forget about the one thousand dollars you paid. It's a premium and it's lost, and the contract will expire worthless. Okay, this example. I hope this example is clear so you understand exactly what are options. So moving on, before we uh, dig any deeper, let's go uh, through some options vocabulary because I think it's important. Remember in, in, the, in, in the first slide I said on or before and I'm going to mention this later, now is the time to distinguish between American and European style options. It's, it's very simple, this is how I remember it. American style option means that the option may be exercised anytime. I put American starts with an A, anytime starts with an A, so American anytime. The second one is the European style, which may be exercised only at its expiration date. Now you might think, if I'm holding a, an European style option and I have a decent profit and I don't want to wait until expiry date, what do I do? Very simple, just sell it. The limit is on exercising the option, not trading the option. I got this question before, that's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. Next we have assignment. This is a notice sent to the option seller, the option seller, the writer, indicating that an assignment is going to be made, which means if he is short, he is the writer, he is short, so he is either short a put or short a call. He is going to be assigned the underlying if he is short a put, he will be obliged to buy the underlying. He will own the underlying. If he is short a call, he will be obliged to sell the underlying. If you own a stock and you wrote options on the on uh, call options on the stock you own, this is a strategy called cover call. If the call ends, uh, ex uh, expires in the money, you're going to wake up the next day and you'll find that the same quantity as per the contract, if you have 10 contracts and each contract is 100 stocks and you own 1000 uh, stocks of, of, of this particular company, you will wake up the next day, you not have them in your account. As simple as that. This is a sign. Early exercise, you should know by now that this is only applies to the American style option that you could exercise anytime. So you could exercise early, this means before the expiry date. 
contract size this is the predefined quantity of the underlying per contract and also I want to note something here about the premium the premium is always per unit of the underlying not per contract if the underlying is a stock the contract is for 100 shares if the premium is two dollars this means the price of the contract is two dollars times 100 shares so it's two hundred dollars this is the price of the option this is what you're going to pay for one contract you must always know the quantity of the underla underlying in an option contract before initiating a trade because some other instruments could be different like for example options on crude oil futures is 1000 barrels per contract is not 100 so it's important to know exactly what you're trading it's very important also the the, the last uh, trading day uh, I don't want to, 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 to get you mixed up but if you're trading futures the it's complicated options on futures is complicated because the option expires like uh, before before the actual future contract expires uh, I think by uh, by a month if I'm not mistaken or maybe three weeks I'm not hundred percent sure next is the premium I'm sure that you know what that is it's the price of the option now we are going to discuss a very interesting um, set of terms and um, you need to understand this by heart the first one is the intrinsic value this is the value of the option if it was to expire now immediately if it's going to expire immediately how much you will get this is the intrinsic value we're going to have an example to explain uh, each of these uh, four terms the coming four terms uh, just to know the difference in the money for a call option you are a holder of a call option so a call option will finish in the money if the stock price minus the strike price is positive what do I mean by positive let's say that your call option the strike price is $90 and the stock price is $100 you have the right to buy the the contract to buy the underlying at 90 and you are going to sell it in the market for 100 so the, 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 the option is in the money for a put option is the opposite the strike price is 100 and the stock price is 90 it's lower it's a put option again the option is in the money what about out of the money it means that the option if it expires today it will expire worthless it will equal zero there is no negative you cannot lose more than the premium plus the commission uh, in, in, in any option state if you are a buyer this is your maximum loss if you are a buyer of an option if you are a seller this is something else if you are a buyer of an option and you pay the premium this is your maximum loss so for a call option to be out of the money the strike price has to be higher than the the, the stock price you bought a call option you want the stock to buy you bought it at a hundred dollars the the the, um, the the strike price is hundred dollars the stock price is eighty dollars it doesn't worth anything same applies for the put option the strike price 
has to be higher than the options than the, the stock price. So it's it's worth something. Goes without saying if the options if the stock price equal the strike price, it's called add the money. I didn't put it here, I don't know why, but here it is. If it's the stock price, if the underlying price, I don't want to keep repeating stock price stock price because it could be any anything. If the underlying price equal the strike price, the option is add the money. Next we have the time value, the in extrinsic value of the option. This is the difference between the intrinsic value and the premium at any time of the option's life. Any time. Until the last second the options trade, there is always time value. Time value equals zero when the option expires. Let me go through uh, some example just to make sure that you understand exactly. So we have Apple, this is the, the stock price, okay? Stock price of Apple now is $125. And you have the following list of options. We are going to see what's this table uh, later on, but you, you looked at something called the option chain and you found these are the stri strike prices. And you have the call and the put. Now at 125, both of them add the money. Okay. Now at 120, the strike, strike price at 120, and the stock price is at 125. Is this in the money or out of the money? You are a holder of a call option at 120. So you have the right to buy the underlying at 120. Now it's being sold at 125 in the market. So clearly you're going to make $5 profit. So this is in the money. Of course, same, same applies for the 115. You're going to make $10 if it expires now. Let's do the diagonal one because this is, uh, it, it will be more clear. Now the put option, it's at 120. You buy a put option to sell the underlying at the stri strike price. Now the strike price is 130 for this option. Apple is stock price is at 125. You can sell it for 130. So clearly you could sell it for 130 and you buy it for mo for 120. You make a quick $5. So this is in the money. Same goes for this, you're going to make $10. I used simple examples so you could you could see exactly what I mean. And my height handwriting is terrible, I'm sorry. So now let me change the color um, just to... Now for a call option at 130. We are at 125. Why would you buy an, the underlying at 130? when you can buy it from the market at 125. So this is out of the money. This is going to expire worthless. Same applies for the 135. It's going to expire worthless. Let's look at the put side. The stock price of Apple is at 125. So this means that you could sell it for 125. Why would you exercise an option to sell the underlying Apple, the stock, at 120, when you can sell it at 125. It doesn't make sense. So, 
this is also out of the money and this is out of the money okay clear I hope so okay let me let me show you another uh, point about the the premium I'm going to break down the premium the options price the contract to see exactly the intrinsic value the time value the option is in the money or out of the money a call option for Microsoft strike price is 180 so this is the first point Strike price is 180. Microsoft current price is 200. The premium is 25 dollars. Okay. A call option with a strike price of 180. The current market price of Microsoft is 200. The premium is 25 dollars. The intrinsic value for this call option is the stock price minus the strike price it's twenty dollars I think this is clear by now so the time value is simply the premium min minus the intrinsic value which is five dollars so if this was to expire now the maximum you would get from this option is twenty dollars this is its extrinsic, uh, intrinsic value but because it has time maybe 30 days or two weeks or two months there is an extra five dollars that is valued in the option in case the stock price might go to 210 so if this goes to 210 after let's say at expiry you paid five dollars extra for this time and actually you made ten ten dollars plus it's going to be 210 and you'll you'll buy it for 180 so it's thirty dollars difference. Of course, it could go down, but this is how, this is how it's calculated. And so this option is in the money. It's in the money because of in intrinsic value. That's why it's in the money. A put options for Microsoft. Again, the strike price is one eighty. Same strike price, but. Microsoft current stock price is $170 and the premium is $13. The intrinsic value for a put option now it's here we said stock price minus track price which we are going up. So we take the high minus the low. Here we are going down but we'll also take the high minus the low. We want our strike price to be higher than the stock price to make profit on a put option so it's the strike price minus the option the the stock price 180 minus 170 it's ten dollars the intrinsic value and we'll do the same thing we have a time value of three dollars and of course this is in the money because of this guy okay so far Let's look at a couple of examples where the option is out of the money. Call option again for Microsoft. Now the strike price is 200 and the current price is 180. This is a call option. So again, stock price minus strike price. 180 minus 200, zero. We don't put a negative sign in the options because this is you are not going to pay anything more than your premium and the worst that could happen is you lose the premium and the option expire worthless so the value here is just zero there is no intrinsic value we have only time value the premium here is six dollars where did it come from this is just time value because the contract has time to expire there is 30 more days or 90 more more days remember our house uh, example 
anything could happen in this period of time. Microsoft could reverse and go up to $220. So instead of the intrinsic value to be zero, it's going to be $20. So this is the time value is 100%. The premium is 100% time value. And this option is out of the money. Again, a put option for Microsoft strike price is 180 and the Microsoft and Microsoft current price is 190. Again, we want it to be the opposite. The premium is $4. Again, the intrinsic value for this put option strike price minus stock price zero we don't put a negative and the time value is hundred percent of the premium because it's four dollars minus zero it's four dollars and this option is out of the money I hope it's clear now because this is very confusing and you need to, to, to read it carefully to understand when you are in a position, are you in the money? Are you out of the money? How much is the time value? How much is the intrinsic value? This is, this is basics. You should know this by heart. You should know this in and out. So please watch it again. If you are confused, send me any questions uh, you want. And I hope I'll answer as many questions as possible. Okay, let's keep going. Where did we stop? Time value. Now the writer, okay, the, the trader who sells the options contract, he's the writer. We mentioned this before. We are here now, okay? Leaps, this stands for, actually it should be uh, all capital letters. Because it's an abbreviation. It's long term equity anticipation securities it's a regular option but for maturities greater than one year and more that's it now some brokers you'll come to uh, to, to you'll, you'll see these expressions when you trade options in in some brokers buy to open buy to close sell to open sell to close it's it's, it's straightforward, but I'll, I'll just mention it. Buy to open, you buy an option contract to initiate a new position. As simple as that. Buy to open a new position. Buy to close, you would buy an option contract to close a short position. You were short an option and you want to close it, so you have to buy it just to see the difference. Sell to open, you would sell an option contract. You would write an option contract to initiate a new position. Sell to close, you would sell an option contract to close a long position. You are long buyer put, you want to close it, you need to sell it. So this is how you sell it. Net credit, this, the net credit and the net debit, it's when you're buying more than one options contract, a combination of options legs that would involve paying a premium, you'll be buyer, and getting a premium, you'll be a seller. And we will see this when we start discussing option strategies, but for now we'll just introduce the terms. So net credit, Let's say that you bought a call or a put, you just bought an option, and you paid a premium of $4. And you sold a different option. You cannot buy and sell the same option, exactly the same option. It doesn't make sense. So you would sell a different option for $6. You paid $4. You got six dollars. You have a two dollars net credit. For the debit, it's the opposite. You bought a call for a premium of four dollars, 
and you sold a put let's say for two dollars so you paid four dollars but you only got two dollars so you debit you paid two dollars okay open interest we are here now this is the net total of all outstanding open position for a specific option contract I'll say it again net total of all outstanding open positions for a specific options contract this is updated by the end of the day by the way uh, you not you not have it updated throughout the day so say that the current open interest is 1000 I'm going to write it, write it here open interest 1000 and today's volume for this specific uh, option contract it's 500 this doesn't mean that tomorrow the open interest is going to be 1500 no actually it's not going to be 99.9% .9 is not going to be because out of this 500 it could be remember here we said buy to open buy to closer maybe 100 contracts are closing positions so what does this mean that 100 from here are going to reduce this 1000 so this is going to be 900 and what do we have left here we have 400 so if this is this is exactly what's going to happen so tomorrow we should expect the open interest to be 1,300. You got that? Okay, next payoff diagram. This is a graphical representation of the P and L of the of the of, of an option uh, at different prices until expiration. This is going to be discussed in details when we start options strategies series of videos. Uh, it's long video. Let let me let me. Uh, show it quickly now it looks something like this oops this is the P and L profit and loss and this is the price okay let's say we we are buying a call option so here is the zero here is minus one dollar minus two dollars plus one dollar plus two dollars and here is the prices uh, let's say um, this is uh, sixty dollars, eighty, hundred, one twenty, one forty. Let me change the color, um, just so you see. Okay, so you bought this call option and you paid one dollar. So at the start. The, the strike is, just to make it simple and it appears, the strike is 99 and the expiry is whenever. So this is the strike price, okay? I chose 99 so I don't mess the, the graph, it's not, it's not very clear. So you paid $1, so this is your profit and loss now. You start by minus one, and then it's a call option. So you need the price to go over 99. So now it's 60, still minus one, 80, da, 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 until you reach 99. 
it will go something like this. But your break even, the zero, it's as a, at the hundred. It's at, at the hundred, not the ninety-nine. This intersection here, this is one hundred. Why one hundred? Because at what at, at at the stock price, when the stock price is at at a hundred, this call option intrinsic value remember intrinsic value would be one dollar, which is the premium that you paid. So now you break even. This is called the break even. Break even. Okay, and then it will keep on going up, 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 up to infinity. So this is a typical payoff diagram for a call option. The price is equal to the premium plus the strike price. This is your break even. Okay. Rolling, it's closing your current position and at the same time initiating a new position on the same underlying but with different terms. Maybe a future expire for it. Settlement, this is the process by which the underlying stock is transferred from one brokerage account to another when the option is exercised. The underlying, I'm sure you know what's, what's the underlying. It's the security which the buyer of the, op the, the option has the right, but not the obligation, to do something with it, buy it, sell it. Finally, my favorite, the volatility. Let me just get rid of all this mess. We are here now. Okay. It's it's a very it's a very complicated uh, term when it comes to options. It could be very advanced, and um, I've dedicated a video for this subject down the road. For now, just what do you need to know? It's a measure of the amount by which the underlying is expected to move in a given period of time. This is this is the same as the standard deviation of the daily stock price. The annual standard deviation of the daily stock price. That's it. Um, I would uh, recommend that uh, you subscribe to my channel to be notified when I upload uh, future videos it's it's a long journey as I said uh, as you might have noticed um, I, I, I didn't include any vocabulary concerning the Greeks as these would be mentioned in in the coming slides and also about the options strategies <coughs> and because I'm going to have a lot of videos about these so I don't want to keep repeating myself and wasting your time okay now at this stage we need to know how to read an option symbol. Let's see. I put here some examples of options, typical options symbols that you would see uh, at your broker. So let's look at the first one. What's the first part? This is the underlying. AAPL, this is, stands for Apple. May 14, 21, this is the expiry date. 125 strike price call this is the type of the auction I think it's it's very simple but let's do another one SPX this is standard and pores index S&P index may expire 4150 this is the strike price call the type of the auction so if you if you own this if you are Holder, buyer. You want the S and P to go over four thousand one hundred and fifty by how much? By at least the premium. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, that this the premium is fifty dollars. Your break even is four thousand one fifty plus fifty dollars. So you need the S and P 
to be higher than 4200 for you to start making a profit. Next, CL, this is crude oil. GC, this is gold. Again, this is these are options on futures. Options on futures. Notice that they included the exchange. Actually, I didn't know that before I, I prepared this slide. I didn't trade the uh, options on futures before, so I just noticed this. I didn't know. Okay, so from where would you get all this data? Where do you look for it? If you're interested in a stock, you just look at the bid and ask, you buy or sell, end of story. In options, it's, it's different. There's something called the options chain. And this I replicated from my broker, Quest Trade. It's for Facebook. Here you can see the underlying. This is the stock price, the last stock price. And all this about the stock price, it has nothing to do with the options. This is the list of options. These expire on 21 May, and then 28, and then 18 June. I just picked the monthly. Here you find the strike prices and look at this. This is the theta, gamma, delta. These are the Greeks I was talking about. We're going to see this in, 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 in another example uh, where it will be more clear. And you have, I just want to show you the open interest here. Let's take this one. The open interest is 3.83 thousand and the volume today was 2.27 see this one this one if you add this 3.83 2.27 this is 6.1 okay I strongly doubt that the next day the open interest is going to be 6.1 as I mentioned before, some of this volume would be closing out positions from the previous day outstanding open interest. So you know, because it took me time to understand this, so um, I'm sure that you are smarter than I am. And then this is the bid and the ask, this is exactly at the stock. Bid, ask. You buy the ask. You sell the bit. Okay, here is another form. This also I replicated from somewhere, I don't remember. Again, you'll find exactly the same information. This is the underlying, this is the expiry date, and here are the strike prices. So, again. This is the 305. Where is the... It doesn't have the open interest here. Okay. And it has the Greeks. Maybe you should find the open interest somewhere. No, I cannot see it. Anyhow, this is how you get... This is how you look for the available uh, options for a specific underlying. You'll find this in, in stocks, in, in futures. I mean, everywhere. This is how you find it. Next, we come to options pricing. The option price is the premium. The buyer pays to the seller for the right, but not the obligation to take some action or have options in the future. I know that I repeated this for 1,000 times now, but just to make sure that everyone gets it. How do we calculate this? premium, the option price. These are derived from very sophisticated mathematical models. Some commonly used models are Black-Scholes binomial option pricing and Monte Carlo simulation. Um, the Black-Scholes was revealed in 1973. 
by the economists Fisher Black and Myron Scholes, and both received the Nobel Prize in Economics for their discovery. I believe that Fisher Black died before receiving the prize. I'm, I'm not hundred. I, I think so. But yeah, anyhow, it was um, um, a great discovery, and they were awarded the Nobel Prize. You don't need to dig deeper into these models because uh, at this stage you don't need them. But you need to understand one one thing very important. That's why I put this uh, this slide here. What are the variables that affect the price, the premium, the output of this equation? Let's say this equation, uh, it's uh, x plus y plus z plus uh, alpha plus beta equal the price or the premium. This is what concerns you, this this part here. But to reach this part, you need to know what will affect the price. If you are long, you want the price to go higher. So what in this equation that is negative, the slope to this one has a negative sign next to it. We will we will uh, we'll we'll see exactly what I'm talking about in the, in the coming slide. So these variables are called the Greeks, and this will be covered in the next slide. Let me say a word about options calculator because it's it's very important actually. Uh, from the option chain, I I spent some time, maybe a few years before I I started getting myself used to using option options calculator. I now even have it. On Excel you could find uh, free Excel templates with options calculator because I'll, I'll tell you why um, let's say that we have this quote on the option chain we have Facebook this is the underlying 310 this is the strike price and it's a call and let's say it expires in 30 days and this is the bid and this is the ask it's 445 465 you can you can do valuation for stocks you would run some numbers run some models check different um, uh, do different analysis you could value a stock and you could come up with a number and you could say based on my valuation the market stock, the market price for this stock is undervalued or overvalued. But for options, what would you do? Without digging deeper into options valuation and pricing, because this is a very advanced topic, options calculator does the trick. You plug in numbers, you get a theoretical price for the call and the put. Let's say for this. Facebook option, you plugged in the number in the options calculator and it gave you a theoretical price for the call, $4. So clearly the market did not price the option correctly or there is something the market knows that we don't know. So. If the theoretical price, the calculator says it's four dollars, why would you buy it for four sixty-five? So it's like the option would just raise a red flag that something is not correct, assuming that your inputs are correct, of course. So if I was, if this happens with me, I would just avoid this trade altogether. I'm not going to to sell it because it's expensive. I don't know what's going to happen. But let's say that you plugged in the number and the option calculator gave you a theoretical price for the call at $4.50. Between $4.45 and $4.65, you would say that the market value for this option is fair. It's fairly va valued. Again, I don't want to dig deeper into this, at least for now. 
um, we'll have a couple of videos on option valuation and pricing it's it's an advanced model so uh, advanced topic so we'll postpone this till later now let's move to the options Greek so as I mentioned in the last slide option the the the, the slide before the last Option Greeks are the inputs for the pricing model or equation for the options. Part part of the inputs because we have other inputs like uh, implied volatility, for example. But anyhow, so this is what you input in the in the model, and this is part of what you input in the model, and you get the option price. So. What are each and every one of them? Let's let's take a look. Let's start by delta because it's the first one on the left. It's the amount by which an option price will change for a one point change in the underlying price. If if it's not clear, just bear with me. We are going to have um, an example. Um, I'm going to 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 put some numbers in the next slide just take it as it is now so the amount by which an option price will change for one dollar point change in the underlying price if the delta is 0 0.5 0 0.5 and the underlying went up with one dollar the price will increase by 0.5 of this increase in the stock it's one dollars times 0.5 so the premium would increase by 0.5 this is what you need to know for now okay next is the theta is the amount by which an options price will decrease decay here it's every day actually some some software and some models uh, calculated by the hour uh, I've seen this once, but let's not complicate things. So theta is the amount by which an options price will decrease every day. This is the, the value that you see in the options chain. Next is the gamma. It's the amount of change in the delta. Now this is not the options price. The first one was the options price. Delta, the options price theta the options price now it's the change in delta for one point change in the underlying delta is 0.5 and let's say that theta is 0.02 and the underlying what went up one dollar so holding everything else constant because I'm sure someone will tell me what you're saying is not accurate so holding, uh, holding everything else constant next day the delta is going to be 0.52 assuming the price stayed the same implied volatility stayed the same all the, uni the universe didn't move overnight everything stayed the same the gamma is the change in delta for one point change in the underlying okay next is the vega this is related to volatility vv vega volatility we'll go back to the options price now we are at option price only here was the delta next the the, the rest is option price the change in options price for one change in the volatility if volatility goes up, the amount of vega would be the change in the, the options price. Finally is the rho, and this is the change again, option price, with an exchange in, uh, for a change of 1% in the interest rate. I, I, I wouldn't worry about, about uh, a lot about this because, you know, I mean, um, with the current exchange rate we have, maybe you will have a 0.25 increase in a year or so so I wouldn't worry a lot about this let's uh, let's look at uh, some 
some data and we compare what we learned now about the gigs. So <coughs> this is the price, okay? Or let me write the premium. Price and premium for the option is the same. This is the delta, theta, vega, and gamma. I didn't include the, the rule. So it's 18.65. This is the price of the underlying. Let's say now it's uh, just for the sake of the example, let's say it's 316. And it went up to 318. This is equivalent to, roughly speaking, two points increase. You agree? It went from 316 to 318, two points increase. So for this first one with a strike of 310, it was for 18.65. The delta is 0.6 per point. So this is 1.2. So we are expecting this to become 18.65 plus 2 times 0.6 equal 19.85 I didn't finish yet don't start yelling and saying you didn't include the theta you didn't just bear with me so for this part so far we are expecting the the premium to be 19.85 1.2 plus 18.65 but we have a negative theta We could have a positive theta, by the way, but this is this is out of the scope of uh, when we discuss strategies. You're going to see that, but let's uh, let's not complicate things now. So we have a theta of 0.119. We subtract minus 0.119. So this is going to be nine four seven. Point nineteen. So we lost about 12 cents because of the theta. It's 16 July. I mean, it's uh, it has uh, how many? 16, 16. It's about 60 days away. Now the gamma. This is what we said about the delta. The gamma affects the delta. V is with volatility. Volatility vega. So the gamma, it says... For every one point increase, remember here we have two points, there will be an increase of 0.01 for the delta. So tomorrow when we wake up, holding everything else constant, we should find a delta of 0.6 plus 2 times 0.10, which is going to be 0.62. Okay, I think this should be clear. It's a very simple example, but just to you understand um, how how it's going. If if the volatility went up one percent, this is volatility went up one percent. This will increase by this amount whatever the price is, if, if, if we're looking at this one the next day and we reach this 19.749 plus 0 0.508, holding everything else constant. Let's say that this move happened tomorrow and uh, before the open and this was the price, that this was the, the Vega and the price uh, is 318 and it didn't move and Okay, this, these, these are dynamic values. They change by the second or the minute. So this is like uh, a short important point of time. So this is how you analyze it. Just, just to get a feel of, uh, of what it looks like. Okay. Um, I think I covered everything uh, I wanted to mention so far. Uh, so... We just left 
with the closing note options is a very useful trading instrument for many purposes for speculation for income for hedging and a lot of traders avoid options because they think it's too complicated they fear option because they think they will not understand it but as you see if you if you go through my video step by step i think it's very easy okay what i what i've uh, uh, what i've mentioned in the video today were the basics but you would see when we start digging deeper step by step you'd see that it's not it's not rocket science uh, maybe the valuation and the pricing is 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 difficult but you don't have to be master in in pricing and valuation of uh, of, uh, of option uh, contracts to trade options Option trading could suit all type of investors. If you are risk averse, you could trade uh, very low risk options. You could take very risky options, speculator. You could even gamble with options, you could take crazy positions. It's suitable for portfolio managers and the list goes on. Now, very important point before I go, before considering trading options I strongly recommend reading the characteristics and the risks of, of standardized options you could find this on the options clearing corporation website it's www.theocc.com you could download it or you could drop them an email and they would send it to you for free if you are I think within the US and Canada I don't know but yeah, drop them a line. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, in the next videos, I'm going to discuss option strategies in details. There are about 60 strategies, so it's going to be a very long journey. But it's very important to know your options before you trade options. Thank you very much, everyone. Good luck and have a good day.